Namaskar Nileshok and welcome back in this series the precession of the earth's axis and its implications part 4 tropical versus salarial now we understand what the difference is and what the commonality is. In fact, a tropical calendar is a purely solar calendar. Sun, as it goes around the earth and earth's inclined position and relative position of that earth's axis or the earth's inclination with respect to the sun, that is the cause of the seasons. Only sun is the cause of the seasons. And of course, Earth's inclination. But the moon has absolutely nothing, nothing to do with the seasons. Okay, that's our tropical calendar, which is starting from the point of vernal equinox, completing a full circle and coming back to the point of vernal equinox, spring equinox, Vasanta Sampat. Then sidereal calendar is essentially taking the tropical calendar and then superimposing the nakshatra reference frame on top of it. All right. And of course, eventually we add the position of the moon, okay, for tracking purposes. But just if you add nakshatra reference frame to tropical calendar, in a way you have a sidereal calendar. All right. Now, once you have a nakshatra reference frame, in principle, you can use it for tracking almost everything. Almost. What can you track? Of course, you track the position of the sun, but you can also track the position of the moon and also the position of the graha from our solar system. The reason we can use the same nakshatra system is because all the graha planets of the solar system with one exception, Pluto, but that we cannot see with the naked eyes anyways. And even that is along the ecliptic too, but it has a bit of a weird orbit. But all other planets, especially the visible planets, plus moon, with respect to the path of the sun, the ecliptic, they are as seen from the earth naturally, because that's the definition of ecliptic. The orbits of all other visible planets, the five of them, plus moon, they are more or less in the same plane, like in the mathematical plane, geographical, geometric plane, okay, as the ecliptic. And that is precisely, precisely the reason why we can make use of the same nakshatra reference frame to track the positions of the moon and also the position of other planets. In fact, if we look at the selection of nakshatras and the number of them, we immediately uh, can deduce that, yes, the number of nakshatras were chosen with moon, moon's motion in mind. Because moon will complete from one nakshatra coming back to the same nakshatra, it will do that one round in 27 days. That's the fastest, okay? So that's 27 days. Think of it. That's why 27 nakshatras. All right. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. Now, what is the gap between the sidereal and tropical? Okay. Tropical is a vernal equinox to vernal equinox. And the sidereal is sun's position starting with one specific nakshatra, a very precise point as seen from the earth, coming back to exactly that same precise point. Nakshatra point. There is a gap of 20 minutes or 50 arc second. That 20 minutes corresponds to what? 20 times 3 is 1 hour. 3 times 24 is 72. So that's 24 hours is 1 day. So shift of 1 day, a gap between a tropical year and a sidereal year will take about what? 72 years. Okay. If we look at it from the arc second perspective, Again, 72 years for one degree and for 360 degrees, 72 times 360, that amounts to a cycle of 26,000 years. Okay. All right. Now we looked at the four consequences. The first three we have already looked at 
in the previous parts, the pole star changes because now pay attention because what we are going to cover number four has to do with this change number one. Okay, in some sense change number two, but definitely you need to understand this consequence number one. The north celestial point is what? It is Earth's axis pointing in the north direction. Now that axis where it points is changing and that's exactly what we are calling the precession of the Earth's axis and making a circle in the sky. That is this cycle or that is the circle of the NCP. We will only focus on the northern hemisphere. And at any given point, wherever it's pointing, the Earth's axis is pointing. And if there happens to be a bright visible star visible to the naked eye, we call that a pole star. And so therefore, in its complete cycle of 26,000 years, when it's pointing in certain direction and there happens to be a bright star, that bright star will be considered, will be designated, will be called a pole star for a certain amount of time. Typically what, thousand years, 2000 years and so on. So pole star changes because of this. Now, because the north celestial point is changing, something else happens. And I'm going to show that with the simulation. What is the significance of that NCP? That is the point when you look up in the sky as if that's the point, nothing moves. All the other stars in that area would be seen in the northern hemisphere going in the anti-clockwise direction around that point or around that star, if there happens to be a bright visible star next to that point, point of NCP. Keep this in mind. Okay. The next one is, we know Earth's inclination. When that is in a simple language, in a layperson's language, comes the closest to the sun, that is the point of summer solstice. Since there is this sidereal gap, so what happens? This Where the sun is going to align with this inclined point is going to keep on changing. Why? Because tropical year is shorter by 20 minutes in comparison to sidereal year. So therefore, the alignment between the position of the sun at summer solstice with respect to nakshatra is going to change. That's by definition the sidereal year, okay, or the precession of the Earth's axis. And so when that changes, that's what we're saying. If this point of summer solstice changes, guess what? All the other cardinal points or any points for the beginning or the middle or the end of any season, any of the six seasons, they are tightly interlocked with the position of the sun at any given point, such as summer solstice. So if that changes, everything else is changing. Their nakshatras are changing. And precisely for that reason, the third point, which is what my trolls have made a royal mess out of, the sun's nakshatra is changing with respect to any given season. And the corresponding lunar month is determined by what? By the position of the full moon, which is going to be exactly 180 degree opposite to the position of the sun. So the nakshatra is also going to change with respect to the season for a full moon. Therefore, a lunar month, which is named after the position of a nakshatra at the full moon, will also change. And in 26,000 years, any given lunar month is going to go through every single possible season. Not only that, at some point, it will be during the first part of that season. After 2,000 years, it will be in the second part of that season, that season meaning any season. Then it will move on to the next season. The first part, then second part, another 2,000 years, first part, another 2,000 years, second part. The season is over. Next season, 2,000 years. Approximately, if it does like a six season, two months each, that's what, 12? And 2,000 years approximately in one month and one part of that season, which means what, 24,000 years. Remember, I said approximately precisely for that reason, because the net cycle is 26,000 years. In reality, it's going to be a bit more than 2,000 years. There is something else that is beyond the scope of this discussion, but because of that, such as the synchronization that is required to be done between the solar and lunar calendar, actually that thing will last even slightly longer. That's why it is a ati manda process, all right? We saw that. The last one, which is what we are going to look at it now, 
is that because of that NCP, the relative orientation of the stars, the way they go around the NCP, that can change. And therefore, it's possible that during this cycle of 26,000 years, for a certain period, maybe think of the stars as X and Y. Okay, so star X, let's say, is seen for a certain period during this uh, cycle of precession as going ahead and Y follows that star. A time may come that as seen from the earth, the situation may happen such that Y is ahead and X is behind. And that's exactly what happens, happens or rather happened during the last cycle of the precession with Arundhati and Vasishta, with these two stars, they are next to each other in the Saptarshi constellation. Okay. And lo and behold, it so happened, the Mahabharat war happened during that time and Vasudev noted it down because it is a very peculiar thing because it had not happened before. And we will look at some additional consequences beyond just the procession. The cultural, the civilizational, okay, consequences of this Arundhati Vasishta observation. So I'm going to show this. This, this can happen many times, different star combinations. The point is, if it is not noted down, then we cannot talk about it. Nayadarshana says, Pramana Tashcharta Pratipatte. You can only talk of the evidence that is available. You cannot talk of the evidence that doesn't exist. Okay. So this is the evidence that is available that aligns with this consequence number consequence number four. So we are going to do it. Okay. So what I am going to do, well, these are the pictures, but I'm going to take you to simulation. Let's go into simulation. Okay. All righty. So what do we have here? We have, mm -hmm. we have the point of NCP. You understand what is that point of NCP is? Where the Earth's axis is uh, pointing to. Okay, let's see. In the northern part. And wherever that point touches the sky, as seen from the Earth, that is the point of NCP. This year I'm showing you here is 2023 CE, our year. And the point of NCP, of course, this is just a simulation, but point of NCP is right there. Where is it? It is next to that star here. Okay. And you will see that star. You know, it's not exactly at NCP. It's close to NCP. So you will find as if that star is going, making a very small circle around NCP. For your naked eyes, if you look at it, if you look at that star, that is our pole star right now, Polaris, you are not going to notice that it is moving unless you are a very good uh, astronomy visual observer. Okay. Otherwise, you are going to say, oh, it's always there. Two hours ago, it was there. Now, I went somewhere for four hours at night, came back, it is still there. But if you look at the positions of all other stars, that they would have moved. In what way they would have moved? they would move like this. Now that red circle along which the NCP would move and go around and come back to the same point, that takes 26,000 years. In fact, that is what the true cause, okay? The precession of the Earth's axis, that is what the main cause is. Now, this is happening up there. Now, because of the Earth's inclination and its connection with the summer solstice, when it's closest, and therefore, its connection with rest of the cardinal points and one of the cardinal point naturally is what? Equinox or spring equinox. And therefore, it's a misnomer when we say the precession of the equinoxes. Actually, the cause is the precession of the Earth's axis. Precession of the equinoxes is one of the consequences. Anyways, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this red circle. We'll bring it back if required. Notice in our times, Yes, all the stars are moving and going around the NCP. Note this star next to NCP. That is our pole star. See, it's not exactly at the point of NCP. Okay. So it feels like as if it is moving around NCP, but it is so close that for our naked eye observation, as if it is fixed. In fact, it goes through a point five. 
its deviation from this is 0.5. It can be even further and still it can be considered a pole star. And if I get chance, I will show that to you, okay? Second thing I want you to notice is that notice when now the orientation of Saptarshi with respect to NCP has not changed. I mean, in this case, wherever it is, it's the same orientation, but it's easy to observe by drawing a vertical line. So I want you to notice how it is crossing, okay? So notice the way it is doing here is almost doing here, only upside down. So I'll stop it. When this Arundhati Vasishta, these are Saptashis, the four stars, and these are the three tail stars, pan and a handle or a kite and a tail, Saptarshis, okay. The middle star of the tail here, the big star is Vasishta. And the next to that, there is a very small star. It is deliberately exaggerated and made it bigger. So that's easy for us to watch it here. That's Arundhati. But its relative position is correct, the way it is shown. Now notice when it crosses the meridian. This is an imaginary line in the sky going from north NCP to SCP and going through your destination, your location, your village, your town, your city, whatever that is. When it crosses the meridian, notice right now how does it cross? Almost it becomes horizontal. That will always not be the case. Therefore, I want you to remember how it is crossing right now. It's crossing like a by becoming horizontal. So what changes? Remember, I said as the point of NCP changes, the other stars are fixed, including Saptarshi, but the position of NCP is changing and everything is always going to go around NCP, even when the NCP position changes. Therefore, the orientation, the orientation, the relative orientation, and therefore this Saptarshi is marked so that you can easily, um, without much confusion, without your background in understanding geometric shapes or motions, moments, dynamic systems, there is a hope that you will not confuse and you will notice the changes. Okay, So this is what it is doing. Almost it is doing like horizontal. Okay, let's go back in time and see how those changes happen. So I'll leave this here. Uh, in fact, let me show you some other change first. Let's look at this circle. Now this circle shows how far away the Saptarshi is from the point of NCP. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back from this time all the way to by back by 26,000 years. Okay, 26,000 years. Now I'm going to animate this portion here. This can keep on going around. That's no problem. I can stop that if you want, but it's not required. I'm going to animate this, essentially walk you through 26,000 years of the entire cycle of the procession. One thing I want you to notice right now, not so much orientation, but the net distance of the Saptarshi and therefore Arundhati and Vasishta from the point of NCP. Remember, what is changing is the point of NCP. Which point is this? This circle. Okay, so I may even leave this circle here. I don't know if that's going to confuse you, but let's do that. So if you focus on the white circle, what do you see? The distance of Saptarshi from the point of NCP changes. Okay, at some point it is very close to NCP, at, right, like this, or other times it is far away from NCP. Okay, why is that happening? Because NCP is changing. Why is NCP changing? Because of the precession of the Earth's axis. Okay, now let me get rid of this circle. Now, what do you see? Now you can see like, okay, now my Saptarshi is closer. Now Saptarshi is away from NCP. And every time this NCP completes one circle, that's 26,000 years. That's what it is doing. Okay, I'm going to pause it here and bring it back to our current year 2023. This is our situation. I am going to uh, remove the red color circle also. Notice, as I said, when it cuts the meridian, meridian is simply for us, uh, we not that, not all of us at least, intelligent people who can visually or not so much intelligence, but they are more verbal as opposed to visual, okay? So people who are visual, they will say, oh, I see that. I see what's happening here. But some people uh, may not be able to see, understand the visual things, even when seen. They like to hear the information, explanation in words, okay? So we are trying to 
um, address the both the crowds. So I'm therefore I'm yapping. <laughs> that's the that's the verbal clues. And what you're seeing on the screen is the visual clues. Okay. All right. So what do you see right now? And I can stop this. In our times when these uh, stars, they cross the meridian, who is ahead, who is behind? Okay, here. Okay, I can just slightly go back here. Here. So now Vasishta is ready to cross and Arundhati is following behind. Okay, keep this in mind. If you miss this, you are not going to understand when actually Arundhati goes ahead. So look at the orientation also and look how it is going. Okay. Now there are uh, extremely dull Mahabharata researchers. You know, in their idiocy, what they go out and foolishly claim something very wrong and take their foolish understanding and try to put it into my mouth. There is one Mahabharata researcher who says, Nilesh keeps Vyasa awake until 2 o'clock at the middle of the night to see Arundhati walk ahead of Vasishta. Right now, of course, in our times, Vyasa is not there. It's just us, you know. Okay. Uh, in our times, I would be the Vasishta. My Gotra is a Vasishta. So I am a Vasishta of our times, you know. So actually, I was in India and one uh, great sadhaka uh, told me, that every day, I mean, he was telling everyone, but he said, uh, Nileshji, uh, please, uh, if possible, make sure that you uh, remember your Gotra Rushi. Okay, so the Gotra Rushi happens to be Vasishta. And I deal with Arundhati Vasishta observation so much that uh, by Bhagwan's grace, I tend to remember Vasishta Arundhati every day. Okay, so that's Vasishta. And Vashishta is going to cross the meridian first and Arundhati is going to cross behind. So this uh, Mahabharata researcher, because of her lack of understanding, she is misunderstanding, making a mess of this, then putting these words in my mouth. Ramda Swami talks about it. Again, guys, if you know Marathi, great. If you don't know, it's worth uh, learning just for the sake of reading uh, Ramda Swami's Dasabod. अक्षरे गाळूनीवाची काते घाली पदरीची निघान करी पुस्तकाची तो एक मूर्ख सच पर्सन इज अ फूल अक्षरे गाळूनीवाची व्हेन समबडी प्रोवाइड्स द इन्फॉर्मेशन यू डेलिबरेटली और बिकॉज ऑफ युअर लॅक ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट यू डोंट रीड एव्हरीथिंग प्रॉपरली ओके और डेलिबरेटली डोंट रीड समथिंग प्रॉपरली काते घाली पदरीची समबडी दॅट पर्सन हॅज नॉट सेड यू आर पुटिंग युअर ओन थॉट्स अँड putting it in somebody's mouth, Nighanakari Pustakachi, not giving justice to somebody's position or some book that person has written. Nighanakari Pustakachi, to ye kamurka, such a person is a fool, idiot. That's what Samartha Ramda Swami is saying. Okay, there is a whole murka lakshana and then there is a padata murka lakshana, learned fool lakshana also, that they are worth reading. The point here is, Saptar, in this case, in our times, Vasishta is walking ahead of Arundhati 24-7. Not when it is crossing the meridian. When the, I can remove the meridian and those people who have a, even a basic, decent knowledge of astron uh, geometry and they can see it. See, look at this as it relates to NCP. Yes, it's not going in a straight line. It's going in a circle for heaven's sake. But at any point, if you look at it, you will notice if you look at the direction uh, of the motion, like the vector, at any point you can draw a vector from there, you see, ah, Vasishta is ahead. Look at that. Vasishta is ahead, Arundhati is behind. But if you don't have even the basic knowledge, okay, then of course you can create nonsense and there is enough of nonsense happening there. Now what I'm going to do, and I will put this meridian. So at least those people who are not very visual, it meridian can help them. But if meridian doesn't help you, do not blame the meridian or me. Blame yourself. Okay. Go to Google. Do whatever it takes. I have hundreds of videos explaining this Arundhati Vasishta. Go and watch those. And after that, you feel like, oh, okay, I'm still not understanding. Give up. Maybe this is not for you. Maybe not for this lifetime. Maybe for another lifetime. Who knows, right? 
ओके बहुनाम जन्मनामंते ज्ञानवान मान प्रपद्यते वासुदेवम सर्वमिति समात्मा सुदुर्लभ इट्स नॉट वेरी इजी फॉर एवरीवन टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू नाउ इज गो बैक इन 1000 इयर्स सो व्हाट आई विल डू इज राइट नाउ जस्ट फॉर सिंपलिसिटी इंस्टेड ऑफ 2023 आई विल डू 1000 ओके सो गोइंग बैक 1000 इयर्स नाउ when i just went back by 1000 years you may not see the difference but keep on noticing so now right now also is kind of crossing this horizontally okay it's very easy to see at meridian who is ahead who is behind but even otherwise right now at least it's not that difficult you can see okay vasishta is ahead arundhati is behind okay you have to learn this art of following the angular momentum of those stars relative to each other and see who is who is going ahead who is behind okay they are not in the one line they are not going in a straight line okay these are angular momentum angular motions but get comfortable let's do uh 2000 years before so i'm just hitting it zero okay keep on watching as it crosses the meridian again as a reference line it can be beneficial again think it's sort of crossing horizontal okay vasishta ahead arundhati behind that same thing will happen this is happening 24/7 guys it's not at the meridian okay don't be fooled by uh, intellectually challenged mahabharat researchers okay all right now what we are going to do is go back 1000 bc so therefore i have, i'm putting the negative sign there okay 1000 bc you go back again what do you see when you see now here is vasishta vasishta goes further arundhati goes behind that's what i mean when you have listened to me in other lectures If you go back thousand years, still Vasishta is ahead. Two thousand years, Vasishta is ahead. Three thousand years, Vasishta is ahead. Okay, this is and why one do this exercise? Because as I said, the relative orientation of these two stars as they go around the NCP is changing. Okay, still kind of horizontal. Now we are going to go back to two thousand years, two thousand BC. Okay, see what uh, you start seeing the differences. It's a difference is happening, but it's happening slow. see if you can notice it notice when it crosses uh, the meridian again who is ahead vasishta is ahead arundhati is behind if you notice ncp has come much closer to the saptarshi and therefore arundhati and vasishta okay now why are we doing this because in mahabharat at the time of mahabharat war vyasa is telling dhritarashtra among the many other signs nimitta is saying you know this star is there that star is arundhati is walking ahead of vasishta ya chaisha visuta rajastrai lokke sadhu sammata arundhati taya pesha vasishta prashtata krutha arundhati has uh, put vasishta behind okay put vasishta on her back vasishta is behind arundhati arundhati is walking ahead of vasishta you can do singing dancing tango whatever you want to do guys no matter which way you translate okay there is another group of uh, let's not go there okay translators and sanskrit experts it doesn't matter how you translate the uh, whichever way you want to look at it uh, vasishta is ahead arundhati is behind okay right now that is what vasudev is saying exactly opposite of this he is saying at the time of mahabharat war it was not this way rather it was the other way round arundhati was ahead vasishta was behind okay now let's go to 3000 bc okay we are going backwards by 1000 years now this is very important because you know what out of 100 plus different uh, mahabharata researchers uh over of last 400 years with those many different claims more than 50 60% of them are claiming their date blindly without giving any damn to any of the mahabharat text evidence astronomy evidence geology evidence geophysics geochemistry genetics physical anthropology oceanography climatology hydrology none they don't give a hoot okay they say hey, i think this date or this is the traditional date trust me or trust the tradition well we start with the tradition but our whole entire dharma is about what nitya nutana sanatano nitya nutana or in the words of shankaracharya something that can be empirically verified we don't need the authority of a tradition or the text or some guru saying something 
Okay, that's why Shankaracharya said, Jnanam na Purusha Tantram kintu Vastu Tantram. In that context only he is saying, if uh, even the Vedas say that uh, Agni is cold, we will not accept it. We will not accept uh, the Vedas. And Veda also doesn't find confrontation with the empirical reality. Because what is Veda? Veda is a knowledge. Why would it conflict with the empirical reality? Okay, but some people have taken this in a very dogmatic fashion. That's why, you know, and this is not just happening in our times. It is happening ever. There are always folks who are extremely dogmatic, who are extremely uh, docile, you know, who are extremely scared. They will not uh, open their mouth even when they see falsehood being propagated. That's there every time. Eknath Maharaj, again, that's another reason to uh, study Marathi, learn Marathi, if you would like to. No pressure on you whatsoever. The Eknath Maharaj says, Nana Mate Pakhanda, Karma Tata Atibanda, Tayanse Thetsane Tonda. And he says in his wide wisdom, Hari Bhajane. I have taken this and I have modified it slightly. I say, Nana Mate Pakhanda, Karma Tata Atibanda, Tayanse Thetsane Tonda. Instead of Hari Bhajane, I said, Nyaya Vidnyana Darshane. But I am, I will admit, I can be a fool. Okay, it can be naivety on my part to think that. When things are explained in a Nyaya Vidnana, people actually understand or people really care. Well, there are some who do care, but the majority may not have the necessary ability. In which case they have to go on a Shraddha. But Shraddha on who? Well, depending on the type of Shraddha they have, you know, Trivida, Bhavati, Shraddha, Dehinansa, Subhavaja, Satviki, Rajasi, Chaiva, Tamasi, Cheti, Tamshunu. Tough luck. Right? That's why we need a sadhana to actually purify our shraddha. It's not sufficient to say, oh, that guy has a lot of shraddha. Well, you have to ask what kind of shraddha. Somebody may have lots of shraddha, but of a tamasi kind. Then we have a problem. Somebody may have a lots of a buddhi, but of a tamasi kind. Okay, then we have this problem of adharmam dharmamiti manyate tamasavruta sarvarthan viparitam sha buddhi sa partha tamasi. That person takes the fact and almost interprets or comprehends or miscomprehends or exactly opposite of what the truth is. What are you going to do? Now something about 3000 BC, as I said, 60% plus of the existing different Mahabharata dating claims are here. Guess what? Why everyone wants to fight this observation of Arundhati Vasishta? Make all, make all kinds of crazy comments. It may be about, it is a nimitta, it is a bad omen, which is a wrong translation. Uh, it is a past tense that is also wrong. Well, it's a past tense because what? It's like, uh, you know, understanding the language, how it is spoken, but will not go there because, you know, it doesn't matter. Unless these people are willing to come, okay, have a skin in the game and willing to do open debate, it's a waste of time to even uh, talk about their foolishness. So, notice what is happening. Who is ahead? Who is behind in 3000 BC? Okay, and remember it happens very slowly. See, look there, Vasishta ahead, Arundhati behind. So no Harikalal <laughs> who claims a year for Mahabharata war in 3000 BC plus minus 200, 300, 400 thousand years will able to validate this observation from the Mahabharata text called Arundhati Vasishta observation for the 3000 BC. That's why when I showed finally that it can happen in 5561 BC or it cannot happen after 4636 BC or 4508 BC, guess what? Out of 100 plus claims, practically 99% of the claims are decisively falsified. That is the main reason why they don't like Arundhati Vasishta observation. Okay, this is the position of a Pakhandi and Karmat. Okay, a dogmatic person. That's what the position is. Okay, now, so so in 3000 BC, Arundhati does not walk ahead of a system. And that's why you see everyone, you know, is upset that I identified this observation from Mahabharata text. And after 15 years of work, I showed that this is only valid between what? 11,091 to 4500 BC. And then Siddhartha Chabra came 10 years after. He refined this further and he said, well, so the interval is not that big. Actually, it's even further shorter. Instead of 6,500 years, it's only about 5,000 years or 5,500 years from 10,248 to 4636 BC. We are going to go there. Now, um, let's do 4,000 BC. So let's go back. Okay. 
So now pay attention because the orientation is changing. Okay. And I'm going to give you a line to um, see if that helps you more. But watch here who is going ahead. Okay. Now this look, the orientation has changed. It's kind of difficult to say who is going ahead. To me, it's clear. I hope to 80% of the people it is clear. But notice how the orientation has changed. When it is crossing meridian, it's no longer horizontal, but it has almost become vertical, When especially when it's crossing the meridian. Actually, that's how exactly the position is every time. But I'm saying it can be noticed very well because we are watching from the earth. Look here, almost like it's now at an angle as opposed to perfectly horizontal. But still, if you notice, Vasishta is ahead. Now, to help you, I'm going to add something. Okay, so this might help. When this is my Vasishta, when this is my Arundhati, when they cross the meridian, just notice the slope of that uh, dotted yellow line. Okay, now who is ahead here? See, the way it is here right now, right now, Saptarshi is ready to cross the meridian. Who is ahead? Ahead meaning closer to the meridian. Arundhati. Who is away? Vasishta. Look at this. This is how the angle is, right? So that will tell us that Arundhati, who is walking ahead or who is not. Now watch carefully, okay? Now by the time it comes to cross the meridian, that's why I'm saying it's like, look how, how it changed. Who, who went ahead? It is Vasishta that is going ahead. Still here, we have Vasishta ahead, Arundhati behind. Now, if you notice, let this continue. If you notice, this is that circle that you are seeing, basically is what? That circle is the circle of uh, precession. Like if I do this, that red line that I showed you before with the NCP, it superimposes on it. And if I do this, okay, I'll, we'll come back to this, sorry. Then what happens? Now you say, oh my God, I never saw this in the sky. Well, this is for your benefit. So this is what is happening, okay? All right, but I'm going to pause it, not to confuse you further and bring it to 4000 BC, right? So what is happening is, notice that it is the Vasishta that is still going ahead. Look, when it crosses the meridian, it goes ahead. It is always ahead only for the benefit of the people who are not very good at visual observation. I am drawing this line. You have to take this on a Shraddha. If you cannot take this on a Shraddha and you cannot figure this out looking at it, this subject is not for you. There are hundreds of other interesting subjects. Find one where you have a skill, expertise, enthusiasm and go there. All right, so here it is doing this, but I want to show you something. Remember, I talked about the 4636. Let me remove this. 4636 BC and 10,248. Where do they come from or what is their significance? Okay, so when it becomes like straight, I will try to pause it so you can read it easily like here. This is our current pole star about 2000 CE. Like, you know, this is our... Uh, Polaris here, okay. This is where NCP was. We are going backwards by 1,000 years, 1,000, then zero, then minus 1,000, meaning 1,000 BC, 2,000 BC, 3,000 BC. Right now, we are at 4,000 BC. What is the significance of 4636 BC and 10,248? This is based on the work of Siddhartha Chabra. He showed that if you draw, which I had done in 2009, he did it with a refined year. When I did this in 2009, the years I had come where if you draw a straight line going through the star of Vasishta, then star of Arundhati, and you extend it in the direction of the NCP circle, this is this NCP circle, it will cut it twice like a cord. Okay, so it cuts it here and it cuts it here, and then it goes further. This is an imaginary line, guys. What is the significance of it, though? We'll go with the Siddhartha Chabra's years, 46, 36, and 10,248. When the point of NCP is right here, or right here, and when will that happen? Well, in the year 46, 36. Let's do that. 46, 36, 
BCE. Now look what happens. That pink dot of NCP will come and superimpose itself right on this yellow dot. Okay, there. You see? Now what is happening? Okay, I am going to... Uh, I can't remove this here. Okay, fine. The circle will stay. Now notice, see, now see what happens if you can notice something. And I'll try to stop it a couple of times. In the year 4636, as seen from the earth, what you're going to find is as the Arundhati Vasishta go around the point of NCP as seen from the earth, no one is walking ahead of the other. They both are walking together, which means what? They are going to cross the meridian at the exactly same point. Okay, here, you see? Okay, so now I can just do that, but it will go further. But the point is, right when it crosses, nobody, no one is ahead, no one is behind. They are going to cross exactly the same time. Now, are they only crossing exactly the same time at meridian? No, they are always together, but it is easy to see at the meridian, just like um, runners in Olympic or so, you know, like when they finally complete their race, you know, there is like, imagine a laser beam sort of going through, you know, which notices which runner came first. And, you know, the, this measured at the level of their chest. So that's why, you know, you'll see that they push their chest further. Okay. Uh, because that's what is measured, the distance in their lane and so on and so forth. Just like that, that's why this reference line of meridian is for that purposes. It is to help us. It's not required. In the year 4636 BC, 24-7, both Arundhati Vasishta are together. Again, when will that happen? Uh, again, if you go back in the past, again, meaning you are going backwards, it will happen again if you go back to the year 10248. Now, when I hit enter, you will see this point of NCP will come here. Okay, there. Again, in this case, if you look at the animation, what you are going to find is, Arundhati and Vasishta are together, walking together. No one is walking ahead of the other. Okay, so here. I mean, this is just the simple geometry people who understand geometry, they will know it. Okay. The point of NCP, the star Vasishta and star Arundhati are on one straight line. And Arundhati and Vasishta are going around NCP. So they will be together. Now what happens? So actually, if you look at this line here and look at this entire portion, okay, almost like mm, uh, almost like more than 75, 80% of the time through this cycle of 26,000 years, you know what you're going to find? Vasishta is ahead, Arundhati behind. But in the last cycle of the procession, there was this time period of about 5,000 years, like from 10,248 BC to 46 BC. So when the point of NCP was somewhere here in this region, what you're going to find is that as if, and actually as if meaning it's apparent motion because earth is rotating. When seen from the earth, it's Arundhati which is walking ahead and Vasishta is walking behind. So we are going to go directly to the year of Mahabharata war 5561 BC, but frankly, that is true anywhere when the point of NCP is from 4636 BCE to 10,240 BC. This portion of the arc shown by this uh, dotted line, anytime the NCP is here, what you're going to see is that Arundhati is walking ahead of Vasishta. And that's happening 24 7, by the way, guys. Okay. It is relatively easy or easy to notice it at the point of meridian. Again, if you can figure this out and see it here, just like what I'm going to try to show you, great. If not, you have to take it on a Shraddha. Or after that, you say, still, I'm not sure this subject is not for you. As simple as that. Okay. So now here, look. Now, Vasishta is bigger, so it looks like, oh, both are touching. But if you just take them as the point, the center points for Vasishta, just represent by a just a dot. And same thing for Arundhati. You will see Arundhati is uh, touching. The difference is very small, but it is there. Something that in the recent Indian past, people thought impossible in the very order of nature astronomy speak is actually possible. If you remember the song, Anhoni ko honi karde, it's something like this. That is the beauty of Vasudeva's wisdom. In fact, 
since I'm studying these for a long time and relatively recently, and when I say relatively recently, still like last 10 plus years, I started studying Kalidas also. But before, mostly Valmiki and Vasa and few other astronomy texts, what you find is that Vasudev and Valmiki were great astronomers. You want to know this and to encode it. Encoding is another part, but just to know it or which crucial evidence to encode, it takes infinite wisdom. Okay, so that's what they have done here. Because this is not repeated since that time. After 46, 36, this is not repeated. Okay, and we can go on and on that subject. In future, it will happen. But if you go beyond 10,248 BC due to some other astronomy phenomenon, if you go back through different cycles of the precession, Arundhati never goes ahead of Vasishta. And we are tracking these stars for thousands of years. 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 plus years. In all these cycles of 26,000, Arundhati never went ahead of Vasishta only during the last cycle, which is to say only between 10,248 BC and 4636 BC, it went ahead of um, Vasishta. Okay, so like this cycle here. So you can, because it's an angle now, you can see which one is closer. Okay, that line, dotted line can help you if you are not very good at making visual observation. Okay, so when the Arundhati Vasishta together, when they are coming and crossing meridian, touching the meridian, you can see that was Arundhati is ahead and Vasishta is behind. Okay, so that's happening in 5561 BC, but not just that year. As long as the point of NCP is anywhere along this arc that I'm showing, it's going to happen. Now, why is this happening? Again, we saw the relative positions of the two stars as they go, go around the point of NCP changes or can change significant enough since NCP point is changing. And it so happens that in case of Arundhati Vasishta, that indeed happened during the last round of the cycle of the precession. And then in the infinite wisdom of Vyasadev, that time when the Mahabharata war was happening, that using additional 300 plus evidence, we arrive at 5561 BC. But the Arundhati Vasishta observation only tells us this much, that Mahabharata war is not possible after 4636 BC, which is to say what? It is not possible in the last 6,600 years. Okay, and it's not possible anytime before 10,248 uh, BC. It is only possible during this 5,000 year period. That's all Arundhati Vasishta tells you. And then you look at additional evidence and everything starts falling like pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. Okay, the unsolved enigmatic clues, okay, for the crossword puzzle, you bring them together and bingo, you get 5561 BC. Now, just last point. What else? So this is the consequence number four. But the very fact Vasudev is saying that, my dear king, Ya Chaisha Vishuta Rajas Trailokya Sadhu Sammata, my dear king, the Arundhati that is famous in three words, okay, that is walking ahead of Vasishta. Arundhati Taya Pesha Vasishta Prashtata Kruta. Vasishta, she has put behind on her back, whatever you want to call it, or she's walking ahead. No matter which way you translate, meaning is the same. Now, people go on a tangent, you know, in a very foolish tangent. Oh, but why would Vasudev write that? <laughs> okay. It's like asking, why did Vasudev write Mahabharat? Well, read Mahabharat. He will tell you. He says, I'm going to stamp this history for you. And how do you stamp the history? With the help of a language, with the help of perfect time clock, which is astronomy. Astronomy is time. And then how do you preserve it? With the help of a vibrant, intelligent Rushi tradition, Guru Shishya Parampara. And that's how it came to us. Okay. So Vasudev taught this. So in the history, you know, like read Sir Karl Popper's poverty, poverty of historism, okay, historicism. But anyways, he talks about asking why is actually a dumbass question. Meaning the question is not bad. But actually, then we immediately jump into psychoanalysis. And if you want to avoid the psychoanalysis, which is the Western Indologists are masters and they make a joke out of everything. 
But this is not limited to Indian Itihasa. It is true for everything. I mean, it's okay to speculate, but mention it is a speculation. If we are lucky, we may know what. If we are luckier, we may know when. But when it comes to why, you can speculate, speculate, speculate until cows come home, but you'll never know. Because, you know, it's like trying to guess what's going on in somebody's brain. But we can look at Pramanata Sharta Pratipatte, the evidence that is embedded, we can look at it. And that's what that's what that's what I'm doing here. It took me 15 years, guys, to figure this out. 15. Now somebody is going to say, why did it take you 15 years? Well, Galileo says, uh, once somebody makes a discovery, it's very easy to understand. The point is to make the discovery. But our Kaliuga brains. That Kaliuga that began on 2nd November 5561 BC, the last day of the Mahabharata war, so about what, 7,500 years ago, are becoming so dull that forget about making discoveries. But because even when somebody makes a discovery, many of us, even the so called researchers, are incapable of even comprehending it. You know, <laughs> that's how pathetic our situation is. But the point I want to make is this. Vyasadev is writing, of course, he's making use of what is available in the sky. But even there is that sense. And actually, it's not a sense suggested by me. It's a sense suggested by uh, people who want to somehow not, uh, somehow want people, common masses to forget Arundhati Vasishta. Okay, they will say, but you know, Arundhati Vasishta, uh, sorry, Arundhati is walking ahead of Vasishta for a long time. Now, guess what? Until 2009, nobody was talking of Arundhati Vasishta observation other than maybe four or five Mahabharata researchers in the last 400 years. I can tell you their names in their documented version. For example, Shankar Krishna Dikshit, Lele Shastri, uh, Pavakani. Dr. P.V. Vartak, Arena Yangar, uh, Professor Arena Yangar. And of course, after taking this, he makes a royal mess out of it. You can go and read his peer reviewed paper. I mean, his paper in a peer reviewed journal. So you will see what kind of stuff goes into peer reviewed journal. But at least he mentions it, to be fair to him. Dr. P.V. Vartak mentions it, but none of them could solve it. Okay, so it's very important. No other Mahabharata researcher even opens the mouth to talk about it. And uh, so when they say, well, yeah, it was going ahead, but it was going ahead for 5,000 years. Until until I showed this in 2009, no Harika Lal was even aware of it or were talking about it or dare talk about it. Now they want to do everything for common masses to confuse the common masses. They hope that common masses forgets it, ignores it. Why? Because it is kicking their ass. Their dates are decisively falsified. But they don't have a Vidyana Buddhi. They don't understand the Tarka. They don't understand how Vidyan progresses. Okay, Vidyan progresses how? By falsifying existing points. Okay, or refining existing points. They don't want to give up. Okay, they want to hang on dogmatically. So they have raised this point. What point they have raised? He said, well, Arundhati is walking ahead of Vasishta for 5,000 years. Okay, guys, you didn't even know that it can go ahead of it. Now I have shown it. Now you have changed the goalpost. But let's go with that goalpost for fun. We shouldn't go because then we are doing same foolishness as them. But there is some other insight that you can have. Not because what they said, that insight you can have anyways. Because think of it, in our times, if we are looking at it, we should have that insight. Vasishta is walking ahead today. Vyasadeva is saying Arundhati is walking ahead of Vasishta at the time of Mahabharata war, which is to say before 4636 BC or after 10,248. That's the only possibility. Now, when people ask, oh, but why is he mentioning even when it's just going ahead for 5,000 years? Now, put your bigger antiquity hat. We have sufficient evidence from all different streams of ancient Indian narrative that takes us to 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80,000 years, and even beyond. It doesn't stop. It's just that empirical evidence to validate such a claim gets less and less because of the ravages of time. But in terms of claims, there is no stopping. 
okay, in terms of the information that is there in our text. So now we have to ask the question, why Vyasadev is kind of making a big deal? This is, uh, this is basically brought up by uh, the trolls, okay? Well, here is the reason, by the way, guys. Because this is, if you look at 100,000 years, multiple cycles of the precession of the Earth's axis, as far as this particular time period of 5,000 years is concerned, from 10,248 to 4636 BCE, it is the only unique time period in the history of the Earth, in the history of the humanity, and I don't know how far back you want to go in humanity, but if you want to go half a million years, fine, be my guest. If you want to go one million, be my guest. Three million years, be my guest. This is where I pull this number. And then some fool will come and say, why did you go three million? What happens before five million? You fool, same thing happens before five million years. Oh, what happens in 10 million years? Well, why the hell you want to go to 10 million years? I mean, there has to be a purpose. Vajaspati Mishra talks about it. Don't be a fool, you know. Anytime you have a doubt or a sangsha, it has to be so prayojana and sandigda. There should be a purpose. If you're asking a question, if answer is found, there should be something wow happening as a result of it. You're solving some problem. Or sandigda, which means you are not just randomly, lazily asking somebody. You have studied this subject yourself through all angles. Even then you are not successful in solving it. And therefore you are coming to somebody who knows more than you. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya. In a humble attitude. Attitude of a learning. Knowing that you don't know. You have failed to figure this out. Okay, that's the Guru Shishya Parampara. Tadvidi, there is a method to madness to understand this. Akarana. You don't just start challenging when you don't know anything. Okay, you may start analyzing and even challenging once you understand the problem. If you think you have a better solution, then you can challenge. You cannot just say, oh, I don't agree with that person. Ah, that person is wrong. No, that doesn't work. Uh, Nyaya Darshana says, remove such fool from the uh, discussion venue. You know, okay, that's called nigrahastana in Nyaya Darshana. Anyone making a fallacy, okay, these are called jalpa, vitanda, hitva, bhasa, chala, jati. And then it says nigrahastana, which means it can be any combination of these five and even more. But Jalpa, just fighting for the sake of it to just have a victory. Vitanda, somebody saying that person's thing is wrong. He says, what is the correct answer? The person says, I don't know. That's Vitanda. That person should be removed from the discussion. Jalpa, Vitanda, Hitva, Basa, the person who keeps on doing fallacies after fallacies. And when time permits, I'm going to take some of the writings, some of the videos, some of the books, whatever, of these trolls. And I'll show you Every single statement practically is a fallacy, a futility, okay? Falls into any of these. Vitanda, Jalpa, Hitva Bhasa, which is fallacy. Chala, deliberately changing the goalpost, you know, irritating the person, deliberately making fun for no reason, not being sincere, not being serious. And Jati, futility, futile arguments, okay? So we'll look at that. And all of these are worthy of a nigrastana, of a rebuke. Our problem is we have extremely scared folks in our Hindu research system. When they see something is going on, say between two individuals or multiple individuals, even when they understand who is right, first thing maybe they don't understand, that is their problem. But even when they understand, they will dare not open their mouth. They are that scared, okay? scared of their reputation, sometimes partially existing reputation, sometimes non-existent reputation. Okay, anyways, back to this. But if Vasudev is saying in the sense of, hey, look, Dhritarashtra, king, look that Arundhati, who is usually behind Vasishta, even she is ahead. Suppose Vasudev is saying in that sense, as claimed by uh, the trolls. And it can be, because now, now we are getting into why, you know, uh, like um, uh, what you call psychoanalyzing Vasudev. But the answer is actually such that these people will, if they truly understand, they will stop making that foolish argument. Well, Vasudev is saying for a reason. 
because in the entire history of a Hindu civilization of hundreds and thousands of years, we don't know how far back we have to go. One thing is certain. That's how the beauty, the preciseness and the accuracy of astronomy. One thing is certain. The only instance in the last, we'll use that same number, 3 million years. Say so that's the 3 million years of humanity. And if you want to go beyond, you have to do the research. <laughs> okay. Because it's not relevant here. It's not so Prayojana and Sandigda. That's why we shouldn't go back. See, so why not look at 5 million? Well, if you pay me, I can look at it. You keep on paying me every month and I'll let you know when I get the answer. Are you ready? No. Now everyone disappears. Don't talk of money, please. But keep on doing research. So if you take this, Arundhati walking ahead of Vasishta, then what do we know? The Vyasa is saying, and in a way, Vyasa is making a big deal, or Vyasa is thinking as an aha observation, because Vyasa Dev knows because of the extremely old, vibrant, precise, accurate Indian astronomy tradition that in the past, say for example, Ramayana times, like if you come back here to 12,000 BCE here, okay, like here. Okay, so 10,000, oh, sorry, here, 12,000 BC, 12,209 BC. I can show you here. Okay, and maybe we'll stop on that. 12,209, this is the 12,209 BC, the year of Ram Ravan Yuddha. I'm going to remove this and see. Now, look what has happened. It's far, far away. Okay, this is because that circle has gone away. Okay, why is that? If you do this, you'll understand. When the NCP is here, your Saptarshi is very close to NCP. When NCP is here or here, the Saptarshi is far, far away. That's why this is happening. Okay, let's remove that. But we can still check. This is going to Ramayana times. Okay. And if you look at Ramayana times, what you, what are you going to find? You will find again, I'll try to slow it down, see what happens. If I can stop it there. Okay. And if it helps, I'll do this. So now you see when the dotted line, follow the dotted line, when it touches the meridian, who is touching first? Okay, I'll go back a little bit here. Let me see if I can stop. Nah, but you saw. It's the orientation is such that it is the Vasishta which is going ahead and then Arundhati. So if you look at Ramayana times, again the Vasishta was ahead. Now people are so idiotic and I'm not talking ordinary people. Ordinary people sometimes, you know, out of ignorance may say something. I'm talking of Mahabharata and Ramayana researchers. He said, then why, how come Valmiki does not write that uh, Vasishta is walking ahead? <laughs> okay. They need to read all Darshana Shastra or they need to study modern science. They need to study philosophy of science. Pramana Tashyartha Pratipatte. We can only talk of the evidence that we have. Don't psychoanalyze Bhagwan or Maharshi Valmiki or Bhagwan and Maharshi Vasudev. Okay. Do not do that. We are trying to understand the mind of Vasa, but that needs to be done in the Tadvidi Pranipatena Pariprashnena Sevaya Upadekshanti Te Jnanam. That's why when you find one reference and it doesn't make sense, you look at the other references. Okay. For example, how old was Rama when he went to one of us? You find two different sets, but if you look at additional evidence from Valmiki Ramayana, it tells you that Rama was 17, 18 years old and Sita was more or less of the same age. No, not different. 16, 17, when they got married and after one year when they left for one was. Okay, things like that. All right, we will stop here about one hour. This is our uh, fourth point. So let's see if I need to summarize quickly. Yeah, so that's the last point. Since NCP changes, we saw. The relative orientation, in this case, uh, Saptarshi, but also specifically Arundhati and Vasishta, because that such observation exists in Mahabharata text. And it's a very unique observation, something that has not happened in the last 6,500 years. That makes it a crucial observation, because that one observation can decisively falsify anyone claiming Mahabharata war happening in the last 6,500 years, which is who? 99.99% of the claims, existing claims for the year of Mahabharata. That is the power of that Arundhati Vasishta observation. That's why it's considered a crucial evidence 
in the language of modern science, but also in Adarshana. Also, that's why it is considered a perfect evidence, crucial evidence, perfect evidence for a crucial experiment. So unless it is shown with experiment, it has no value. Okay, that's why I spent 15 years. Because if you look at just the shlok, Yachaisha, Visuta, Rajas, Trailoke, Sadhu, Sabmata, Arundati, Tayapesha, Vasishta, Prashtata, Krutta, the meaning is clear. Okay, now the bozos will keep on fighting. Actually, they don't fight on this verse. Okay, because uh, they being bozo is very obvious to people in less than two minutes. No matter which way you do. Still, there are some folks who say, well, yeah, let me see if I can create some confusion in the minds of people. They have made the attempts and they have failed in a very disastrous way. But we want this to continue. Because, guys, if I just, I did this in 2009, I wrote a book in 2011, in a very naive fashion, I thought it's done, everyone will understand. And then I realized 90% plus folks simply don't understand. Actually, good number of people even don't care. <laughs> well, that's understandable. But even among those who do care about Indian Itihasa and Indian history and Indian civilization and whatnot, very few are even capable of comprehending it. Okay. So when uh, these folks trolls, you know, the manthan happens, they say, well, yeah, I don't think so. Or they try to come up with some arguments, okay, to make a case that as if this is not happening, it's a good thing. It's a manthan. That gives me the chance opportunity to show through different means how this is correct as embedded by Bhagwan Vasudev at the time of Mahabharata war and how this evidence not just Arundhati Vasishta but 300 plus astronomy evidence allows us decisively to arrive at only one year and no other year whatsoever 5561 BC for the year of Mahabharata war all right so this is the fourth consequences and that's the relevance of it with respect to Mahabharata. Uh, the others, we'll not discuss that, but the first one, two, three consequences that has a relevance for analyzing and therefore drawing proper inferences, objectively testing all the evidence, 300 plus evidence of the Mahabharata text, close to 600 plus evidence of the Valmiki Ramayana text. So that's what, around 900 data points. All right, we'll stop on this. And this concludes uh, this series, mini series, we should say, uh, of uh, what? The precession of the Earth's axis and its consequences for understanding Hindu civilization, understanding the itihasa of Hindu civilization, actually understanding history of the world civilizations. It's not limited to Indian civilization, but in our case, Hindu case, the ancient Hindu narratives, ancient Indian narratives are super rich in astronomy. And that's why this becomes more relevant. All right. Namaskar. This, uh, this is part four and the last part in this mini series. Namaskar.